Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture 20. So, we have been discussing about the Kepler's problem. So, uh, we finished the parabolic orbit and then uh, we have started with the elliptic orbit. So, we will continue with that, but before that we will take one small problem which is related to week 3 uh, whatever the discussion uh, we have been doing. So, uh, let us look into this problem. So, here earth's mean orbit mean heliocentric velocity it is a given it is around 27, 29.78 or the around 30 kilometers per second. Okay. So, earth is moving around the sun around 30 kilometer per second. So, assume that meteors travel in parabolic heliocentric orbit, heliocentric means moving about the sun. So, this is the sun and around that earth is moving. So, the, this is your earth, it is going here in this orbit, okay. your meteor it is coming from somewhere else and it is going in parabolic orbit. So, this is your parabolic orbit. So, that the speed of approach of meteors toward the earth lies between 12.3 kilometers and 17 1.9 kilometer per second. So, let us say that uh, this parabolic orbit here in this case what I have shown there th this is the orbit of the earth and if your meteor it is a coming about this orbit okay, it is a coming like this and going like this. Okay, so, this is going in a parabolic orbit and earth is going moving here in this orbit. So, once they come here so at this point If it is lying exactly, uh, it is a trajectory lying such that it is going to hit the earth. So, it is a velocity will be 71.9 kilometer per second if it is coming from this direction. On the other hand, if the earth is uh, earth is going around like this, this is the sun, this is sun and this is your earth and meteor is coming from this side. So, if meteor is going from this direction say and they are meeting here in this place, they are crossing each, each other here in this place. So, uh, the earth will go here and meteor will also go here. So, the velocity of approach will be here in that case 12.3 kilometers per second this we have to show and here in this case 70.1 kilometer per second. Okay. So, with this much of high velocity 71.9 kilometer per second this is a very high velocity. Okay. This event it is a very high velocity while the earth is moving around the sun with 30 kilometer per second. So, you can see that if the earth is impacted by the meteor so what destruction will take place. So, we have to calculate this value that indeed uh, this will be between these two values. So, uh, it is not necessary that exactly here the uh, this is crossing here in this point uh, we can consider it at any other point because we have to show it the range and uh, we can assume that it is such that here if they are in the same direction uh, like uh, if the earth is uh, coming from this direction and here at this point this meteor is coming from this direction and, and it is such that angle between them is 0. This angle say this is by here if I write this as alpha, so alpha equal to 0. So, that impact velocity will be 12.3. On the other hand, if the impact takes place, if the meteor is going from this place and here if it meets here in this place, so it will be in opposite direction and then the impact velocity will be 71.9 kilometer per second. So, this we have to show and this is a very simple problem. Uh, 
so but understanding it's uh, required okay so we use the equation v equal to mu times 2 by r minus 1 by a under root so this is valid for all the time uh, as we know that we have derived it from mu by r minus this equal to minus mu by 2 a from here we we have rearranged it and we got it so for the velocity of the earth and velocity of the meteor we can calculate from this place for parabolic uh, for meteor first let us consider in parabolic orbit e equal to 1 okay and therefore v meteor we can write as mu times 2 by r and uh, e equal to infinity so 2 by r minus 1 by infinity under root so that becomes 2 mu by r under root where r is the the impact where it's a taking place it's a taking place at the radius of the earth's orbit so this is r earth orbit so instead of writing re we simply write it as r so this is the meteor velocity at that point okay what will be the earth's velocity in this so v earth again this is 2 mu times 2 r earth divided by 1 minus a under root okay. and let us assume that see the eccentricity of the earth orbit e is the will write as the eccentricity of the earth's orbit about the sun is e equal to 1 by 60 around okay so this we will assume to be zero okay that means we will assume this to be a circular orbit so if we assume it to be a circular orbit so earth this is sim simplification earth's orbit is circular if we do that that means r earth will be equal to a and therefore which we know that uh, r earth this will be l by 1 plus e cos theta in the case of the uh, if we assume it to be circular so this e is equal to 0 in that case so therefore r e becomes equal to l okay. and this equal to a times 1 minus e square therefore e equal to 0 and this gets reduced to a so therefore we are writing here r equal r e equal to a and once you insert here in this point so this becomes mu 2 r e minus 1 by r e under root so this becomes mu by r e under root which is the velocity in the circular orbit as we know it's a very easy to calculate so velocity in the circular orbit for the earth this is known and for the meteor this is also known so now if we add them so we get the uh, impact when they are opposite to each other and if we subtract so we get the impact velocity when they are in the same direction so this is on subtraction and this is on addition so simply the, the therefore the velocity of approach approach this will be given by mu by r e under root plus mu by now here in this case for the meteor we have written here 2 mu by r so this we need to reduce to because the impact will take place at the radius of the earth orbit so therefore we need to replace it by 2 by 2 mu by r e so therefore here also we have to write it 2 mu by r e and mu value for the sun it is a given and therefore we can calculate it so this is mu by r e under root and 1 plus under root 2 another case once they are in moving in opposite direction so we have to subtract it so in that case the same velocity in the case of so this is the maximum velocity of approach and minimum velocity of approach will be 
minimum velocity of approach this will be given by because this quantity is larger. So, we put it first here minus mu by r e under root. So, this is mu by r e under root times root 2 minus 1. Now, mu by r e we have to compute and insert here in these two places and we will get the result. So, mu by r e is given to be in the problem itself it is stated uh, earth's mean velocity is 29.78 kilometer per second. So, the, the things are given. So, this quantity is given to be 29.78 kilometers per second. Okay. Therefore, once we insert it, so uh, this quantity 29.78 and root 2 minus 1, this yields you 12.33 kilometers per second and if you insert here 29.78 into 1 plus root 2. So, you get the result 71.89 kilometers per second. So, this is the well maximum velocity here, this is the maximum velocity of approach and this becomes the minimum velocity of approach city of approach. So, you can see that using this simple principle what we have developed, we can work out uh, the things uh, which are of so immense importance and many times you might have heard that uh, NASA has predicted that this uh, meteor is moving toward the earth or some asteroid is moving toward the earth and if it impacts the whole earth will get destroyed. So, the reason is very simple because of this high velocity and from here you can calculate how much energy it will add if the mass of the that uh, meteor or the mass of the uh, that uh, uh, asteroid is known. Okay. So, the whole kinetic energy uh, it is uh, going to be imparted. So, while it uh, um, uh, re reaches the earth and impacts it at such a high velocity. Okay. So, energy will be enormous and the whole earth will uh, depending on the size even the whole earth can get destroyed. Okay. So, we go to the Kepler's problem uh, as we have been uh, discussing earlier. So, we start with that. Okay. So, here now uh, we have been discussing that uh, inside the circle we took one ellipse okay. we were discussing kepler's problem here for the elliptical case okay and this we have written as auxiliary circle or circumscribing circle and this is our ellipse, this is the semi major axis of the ellipse, this is the center of the ellipse here, this is the center, focus is lying somewhere here. Okay. And then what we did that uh, I will shift little bit focus on the left hand side to make it more, co more convenient. So, I will write here the focus is f is located here or so thereafter we extended this upward from here a vertical this is 90 degree here Okay, sorry, uh, I have to revise this. First, we draw the radius vector and from there we have to extend. So, first we draw the radius vector, we from there first we took 
the radius vector to any point and this we noted as p this point. Okay. And thereafter we drop the perpendicular from this point on the x axis. So, this is the perpendicular here this angle uh, this angle we have written as theta. So, this is theta and uh, then this was extended up. Okay. So, this was extended up. So, this point we have written as m and this point we have written as n and also we join the point c and m. So, because distance between this and this point this is a means the radius of the circle the auxiliary circle auxiliary circle radius equal to a and semi major axis is also a this is also a and therefore, this quantity is a and m n then we have written as a and this angle we have taken as e which we have written as eccentric anomaly. So, m n equal to a sin e and p n this we have written as r because p f equal to r p f equal to r. So, p n this becomes equal to r sin theta okay. and similarly f n this is nothing but x and this is nothing but y the coordinate of p. So, the p has coordinates x y. Okay. So, f n this is r cos theta. So, this we have written thereafter we have utilized one property of the ellipse that uh, m n divided by p n this equal to a by b. Okay, so, from this place m n becomes m n is nothing but a sin e and and p n is r sin theta. So, we are going to get relationship between them. So, the, this we have been working with that uh, sorry p, p n is uh, r sin theta. So, uh, this relation we have been uh, working out. So, now writing the whole thing. So, the distance f n we already we have written this is your coordinate from here to here this you are writing as x from this point to this point from f to this point and x equal to r cos theta as we have written earlier this will be equal to a cos e minus a e a cos e a cos e is what distance this distance is up to this point because this is the radius here of this point this is a. So, therefore, this becomes a cos e and distance between this and this this is your a e. Okay. So, we are subtracting to get, get x. Okay. So, also x can be written as x equal to r cos theta equal to a cos e minus e equal to a common taking cos e minus e. Okay. 
and y equal to already we have written r sin theta okay. and for that we use this uh, ratio equation. So, in this case p n is your y, this quantity is nothing but your y. So, y equal to r sin theta and we use this relationship this equal to p n and p n equal to b by see the uh, m n by p n this equal to a by b we have written. So, therefore, p n equal to b by a m n and m n is nothing but b by a m n if we go back. So, th this is the distance from this place to this place m n is a sin a sin e. So, already we have written here in this place. So, this equation just we are rearranging. So, this is a sin e. See there, there is a difference between uh, this r, we r always we measure from this point. Okay. R is always measured from the focus, where r is the any point on the ellipse, while the radius of the earth is, be, is being indicated by distance from this point to this point or either the distance from distance between this point to this point. So, this is the radius of the earth. Okay. So, you have to be careful about this. So, getting this, this is B sin E. So, P n equal to B sin E. So, what we get from here? Y equal to R sin theta equal to B sin E. So, this is the same thing here from here also we could have written r sin theta equal to a by a times b sin e into b sin e. Okay, so, till this extent uh, perhaps we did last time. So, now we have these two equations where x and y these are given. Let us say this is equation number 1 and uh, this is equation number 2. Therefore, if we add an a square and add them, so this gives us r square sin square theta. Uh, this becomes the cos square theta. The first term is related to x is cos square theta. So, we put here the cos square theta and related to the y this is the sin square theta. So, we will put here sin square theta and then squaring the other terms on the right hand side adding them cos c minus e whole square plus b sin e. So, this implies r square equal to a square cos e minus e square plus Okay, uh, whatever we are working now, so this we are doing by one method, okay, which is totally mathematical in nature, little bit of uh, this uh, uh, geometrical relationship we have used here. Later on, we will do it by graphical method also, because it is very important to do by graphical method understanding the things, the basic principles involved. So, the next step is to expand them. So, this becomes cos square e minus 2 e cos e plus e a square and b a square because b is written as b equal to a times 
1 minus e a square under root a times 1 minus e a square under root. So, uh, therefore, b a square will be e a square times 1 minus e a square sin a square e. Okay. So, a square we can take it outside and rest of the things we can work out. So, this is cos a square e 2 e cos e plus e a square plus sin a square e minus e a square sin a square. So, now the term cos a square e sin a square e this added together that becomes 1. So, we write here 1 okay. and then rest of the terms we have to write here. this term and this term combined together. So, e a square can be taken outside and we can write here plus e a square 1 minus sin a square e. So, that becomes cos a square e. One step I am skipping. Yeah, okay, here I will write here uh, e a square minus e a square sin a square e this equal to e a square times 1 minus sin a square e this equal to e a square cos a square e. So, this I have written here in this place. Okay, so, uh, so uh, this term and this term they are taken care of the last term is remaining as uh, minus 2 e cos e. So, the, this minus 2 e cos e and if you can see that this is nothing but 1 minus e cos e whole square. So, therefore, r becomes equal to because all r is always a positive quantity. So, this becomes a times 1 minus e cos e. So, this is the r. So, this will write as equation number 3. Okay, now, we have to get the theta also. So, what we are trying to do as I have told you in the last lecture that while we were working with this equation r square theta dot equal to h. So, this we then wrote as d theta by d t equal to h by r square and uh, d theta r square divided by h equal to d t and this we integrated to get to t minus t equal to r square divided by h d theta. So, here r and theta we are trying to because it is uh, not comfortable to work with the terms like l by 1 plus e cos theta because r equal to l by 1 plus e cos theta and then here we have 1 by h and theta 1 theta 2 integrating between theta and theta 2 this is d theta. So, this was not comfortable situation. So, we are converting into a form where we can easily integrate it, but such a long process of integration can be avoided if we use little the geometric property and uh, graphical method. So, that I will show you later on, but this is also very useful uh, while working with many problems. So, therefore, we are discussing this. So, next we have to determine this cos theta. So, cos theta already the equations are known to us the x value we are aware of. So, from there we can extract. So, r cos theta here cos theta is given by this a times cos e minus e r cos theta equal to a times cos e minus e and therefore, cos theta that becomes a by r cos e minus e cos 
So, this is our cos theta cos e minus e e cancels out. So, uh, we will eliminate a from this place. Okay, but still we have a form uh, with which it is a difficult to work. We have to eliminate here see the r if we replace in terms of this and then cos theta we also require here d theta okay, and we require it in a proper format. Okay. So, for that we need to work little bit more. So, this cos theta this equation is rewritten as rewrite this as 1 minus 10 square theta by 2 divided by 1 plus 10 square theta by 2. So, we are using this trigonometric identity okay. and this equal to cos e minus e by 1 minus e cos e. Okay. Now, using componendo dividendo So, we write this as 1 minus simply we have to uh, uh, add the uh, denominator into the numerator and so on. On the left and right hand side there are various ways of doing this. So, the first term we add it 1 by 10 square theta by 2 you might be aware of this there is nothing in this. So, if you are not aware of just look into the higher algebra by Hall and Knight. 10 square theta by 2 and then we subtract this term also minus 1 minus 10 square theta by 2. So, this subtracting this gets plus equally what you can do that first we, we instead of adding here this we can do the subtraction and this place we can uh, see what I mean. Uh, most of you might be aware of this principle there is nothing great in this. See the principle it goes like this if we have a by b equal to c by d. So, we can write as say the b plus a divided by b minus a equal to d plus c minus d minus c and equally we can also write as the same thing can also be written as a minus b divided by a plus b equal to c minus d divided by c plus d. So, uh, there is nothing uh, peculiar in this, this is a very simple relationship which is used quite often. So, you will see that uh, this is just exchange of numerator and denominator, this is a minus b if you bring it on this side. So, this is a minus b times c plus d. Uh, so, a minus b and c plus d is there. So, here the sign reversal will take place. So, both are the same thing. So, th the same principle we are using here and if we do that. So, we get the result 1 minus 1 plus 10 square theta by 2. It is a matter of convenience 
which one we either we can use this or either we can use it both are same. So, it is a nothing different ok. So, here we subtract here in this case. So, that if we subtract if we take this first and subtract from this this particular term. So, tan will add in the numerator ok. So, this way we will have here tan square theta by 2 tan square theta by 2 divided by 1 plus tan square theta by 2 plus square theta by 2. So, once we have subtracted in the numerator in the denominator we will add. So, uh, this becomes then 1 minus tan square theta by 2 and similarly on the right hand side 1 minus cos e 1 minus e cos e minus cos e plus e and divided by 1 minus e cos e plus cos e minus e. So, here on the left hand side what we see that these two cancel out, uh, these two add up ok, this and this term they add up and here these two terms they cancel out. So, we write it on the next page. So, this becomes 2 tan square theta by 2 and from the this position okay. So, 2 tan square theta by 2 divided by 2 on the left hand side and on the right hand side we have as we can see from this place this is 1 minus e cos e we will write the whole term there 1 minus e cos e and thereafter we have minus cos e plus e. and the other term is 1 minus e cos e and then cos e minus e. So, this is the term. So, these two will cancel out will drop out So that gives us tan square theta by 2 and here we have to rearrange it in a proper way to solve it. So, this will become 1 plus e minus cos e will take it outside. So, this becomes 1 plus e cos e and similarly here in this place this is minus 1 minus e and in this place we get it as 1 plus e uh, like this is 1 minus e this term and this term we are taking. So, once we take the ok we will rearrange it because depending on minus or the plus sign outside it the sign will depend. So, 1 minus e cos e we are taking if we write it with a plus sign. So, the 1 can be here in this place and then we will get is minus e cos e. If we write here a minus sign, so this thing will change, but we want to put it here in this the same format. So, as it appears from here this becomes 1 plus e divided by 1 minus e 1 minus cos e divided by 1 plus cos e. So, tan square theta by 2 and this becomes 2 sin square e by 2 using this trigonometric identity cos square e by 2.
okay and this implies tan theta by 2 this equal to 1 plus e by 1 minus e tan e by 2. So, we have taken only the positive sign. So, we stop here and we will continue with the same point in the next lecture.